day by day we are seeing a lot more of Cyrus Logic dongle being released into the market and in fact in particular Cyrus Logic CS43131 such is the case for this uh, latest addition to the Cyrus Logic family which is Aklium PD4 which I have in my hand right now so let's just have a look at the price first for this PD4 as you can see here from Aklium official uh, store in AliExpress, it is priced at around 55 US dollar, which is a very attractive and reasonable price for such a device offering this sort of configuration. As you can see here, let me bring it up. The configuration itself, it is uh, built on dual Cyrus Logic CS43131, as you can see here with SA9312 USB audio module and in fact uh, there is also dual Crystec crystal oscillators which is unique to PD4 as Aklium claim it and it support resolution up to for PCM 384 kHz 32 bit and also support DSD 256 maximum and this thing is for VRMS rated dongle which means that if you attach your audio gear to this 4.4 mm balance here you're gonna get uh, 4 VRMS maximum and in fact it is selectable between high and low gain with the switch here very easy to just toggle it on the fly and at low gain you would run at around 2 VRMS half the power so similarly the 3.5 mm single ended also offer at a maximum of 2 VRMS and even lower at 1 VRMS when running in low gain Signal to noise ratio is fairly good. I would say definitely uh, one of the best at around 125 dB. As I always mention, anything above 100 dB of sensitivity would be considered as very silent. Now, quickly looking at the hardware itself, this is pretty much a no nonsense kind of uh, implementation. Inside the box, what you're going to get is just uh, the dongle itself. And as usual, Becoming a normal standard nowadays, we have this 4.4 mm balance and this 3.5 mm single ended. And here you can also three buttons here, which is uh, designated as volume up, volume down, at which you can control. Unfortunately, these are not independent volume adjustment, so which means that this button acts like a remote control to the host volume. And the middle button here is effectively the play and pause button. Okay. So that's pretty much it. It also comes with this USB-C female with detachable cable which is provided here. Before proceeding any further, I'd like to clarify about one thing. The entirety of my review for this PD4 will be based on comparison with other dongles that runs CS43131. Like I mentioned earlier, it is becoming a common standard nowadays to use 43131. And in fact, I would start with this uh, iBuso DC04 Pro, which I have reviewed recently. And in fact, this is one of my favorite dongle, which I use regularly. So I am very familiar with the kind of sound that I'm getting from this DC04 Pro. And in fact, looking at the, not just the size, the internal are pretty much identical between these two. So it makes sense to compare it against DC04 Pro. I would also compare it against the rest of CS43131, which I will show you later, okay? And also, I'd like to clarify that the majority of my listening impression, as always, will be based on my listening using this Atimotic ER4, uh, sorry, ER2XR, single DD, and this final audio A5000. And definitely, in fact, I use this a lot, which is this Tanjim Zero, 4.4 mm balance modified okay and of course i also have this with me here two of my headphone which is this magnetic planner of fostec t40 rpmk3 and this sennheiser hd 650 okay now let's just have a look at the comparison of the review notes which i am sharing to you right now and the reason that i'm doing this is that because it makes more sense for me to just directly share with you the kind of notes which i have jot down during my session testing this PD4. So let's just start with the comparison of sound between these two. Let's talk about dynamic itself. The presentation of this PD4 when it comes to dynamic is something which I would consider as being energetic and vibrant and definitely euphonic. 
where else when I actually compared against the DC04 Pro which I am so very familiar with I would say that DC04 Pro does not exhibit any kind of boosting when it comes to the dynamic presentation uh, in layman's term definitely I would say that if you are looking for something which is neutral uncolored definitely DC04 Pro where else this uh, PD4 is slightly boosted when it comes to the way it presents the energy of the sound itself and when it comes to dynamic extension definitely i would say this pd4 exhibit impressive power all right to present dynamic from the furthest end of the lowest frequency or even the highest end of the upper frequency so i am hearing proper micro details from both decay side of it and in fact if i were to compare to dc04 pro they are pretty much you know equal on that but i must admit that when tested using something which is highly resolving like this ER2XR, I am hearing a bit more of extension from this DC04 Pro. As for the sound tuning itself, I would definitely classify this PD4 as being more towards hi-fi sort of sound. In fact, modern hi-fi sort of sound as compared to this DC04 Pro which sounded to my ears a bit more analog and organic sounding. And in fact, if I were to compare it closely, this PD4 is closer to this iBuso DC03 Pro yet another CS4331 which I like offering that modern type of sound. Now let's talk about the mid-range of this PD4. At least what my ear is telling me when I listen to this, especially using this Fostec T40 RP MK3, I would classify this PD4 as being a bit more colored and in fact the enrichment of the texture itself is quite evident when I compare it against DC04 Pro. So what I'm trying to say is that this is a bit more transparent and definitely I do not sense any kind of coloration coming from this DC04 Pro. For example, when I listen to something which is like, you know, modern jazz like of Diana Kroll, I can hear that the her vocal and in fact the instrument itself sounded a bit denser and thicker when listen using this PD4, where else DC04 Pro is definitely transparent, it does not exhibit any kind of additional boosting to the sound frequency itself. Now let's talk about the upper frequency itself, which is the upper mid range all the way to treble. And in fact, when tested with this uh, Atemotic ER2 XR, Final Audio A5000, and in fact, uh, Tanjim Zero as well, I would consider all three of them being relatively brighter. I would say that this PD4 focus a bit more on being crisper sounding as opposed to DC04 Pro sounding a bit smoother and less with the energy itself with the upper frequency. So when we're talking about that energy, this PD4 exhibit a bit more of sparkle, a bit more pronounced, where else it is a bit subtle on this DC04 Pro. So if you are treble sensitive, definitely using this PD4 with bright sounding partner, probably not a very good idea. As for the lower frequency, which is referring to lower mid-range, mid-bass and sub-bass, I would say that this PD4, again, the keyword here is a bit colored. In fact, I am hearing a level of boosting which is evident enough when I compare it against DC04 Pro. For example, especially again, when I'm using this uh, T40 RP MK3, which is kind of a bit bassy, I can clearly hear that the definition, the texture and the density of the lower frequency is a bit denser and stronger on this PD4. Whereas this DC04 Pro, again, being transparent and neutral, does not add any kind of coloration. I am hearing it as how it was intended from the record. But if I want a bit more of energy, vibrancy and excitement, punch, PD4 has it. Moving on to technicalities, sound stage. I am happy to say that this PD4 definitely sounded open and wide to my ears and in fact pretty much on equal terms with DC04 Pro. So in fact when I tested these two of them right side by side using this Final Audio A5000, the widest sounding IM which I have ever tested, followed by this Tanjim Zero and even this Atemotic ER2 XR, what I'm hearing is that an open sound which offer a good sense of width and expanse to the sound itself. So definitely I would say that be it this PD4 or DC04 Pro, you can expect good sound stage from both of them.
On the other aspect of technicalities, especially when it comes to resolution, it is without a doubt this PD4 offer highly analytical and in fact very impressive capability to resolve, to offer very good macro and micro details. It is definitely easy to, for me to say that this PD4 is on par with DC04 Pro when it comes to that regard and definitely I would consider these two being some of the best sounding dongle that you can get in the market right now when it comes to resolution. Let's talk about the power drain of this PD4. Attached to my phone here, which is an Android Xiaomi Mi 90 with 4000 mAh of battery, running Hebe Music App, USB exclusive mode, attached to this 4.4mm balance on high gain, driving this Tanjim Zero 4.4, 32 ohm, at listening loudness, and in fact with also airplane mode turned on, this PD4 was able to score an impressive 15 hours from 100% to 4%. And the only two dongles which I can say that, you know, better than PD4 is definitely this iBaso DC03 Pro, which runs on 17 hours, and Truth Ear Shio, which offer an even crazier 23 hours. But for anything which is above 10 hours, especially coming from Cyrus Logic, this is super impressive already at 15 hours because DC04 Pro scored only 8 hours on the same device. Driving power. So how does this PD4 perform when subjected to difficult to drive partners? For example, as you can see here, this is Fostec T40 RPM K3, one of the most difficult magnetic planner you can find in the market right now, other than Susvara, of course. <laughs> This is 91 dB of sensitivity at 50 ohm. So when I attach this guy to this PD4, right, using this 4.4 mm balance in high gain mode attached to my PC, I was able to get an impressive output for this T40 RPM K3. The sound itself, it is definitely does not sound like a dongle. In fact, I would say that if I'm not looking at it, I would simply say that this thing is being driven by a full-size deck and that 4 VRMS power from this PD4 is no joke. Definitely one of the best when it comes to driving power. Synergy-wise, I would say that this PD4 seems to be a bit more suitable driving something which is relatively warmer sounding or even slower. Something like this Sennheiser HD 650 or even Tangzu Warner SG, Tanjim Tanya or even perhaps Blonde BL03. Because when I pair this PD4 with this relatively and natively fast and bright sounding IM like this PR2XR, A5000, or even uh, Tanjim Zero, or even this very fast sounding Fostec T40 RP MK3, I find the presentation of the sound itself kind of a bit, you know, sizzling. Okay. So what it means is that, you know, you get a bit of brightness when it pairs with already bright sounding IEM. So to balance it out, it is always better to pair this PD4, which is slightly warmer sounding. Okay, now let's talk about some of the observation which I have for this PD4, the cons. I have noticed that when I use this PD4 with my phone here, running Hebe Music App in USB exclusive mode, from time to time, and in fact quite regularly, I am getting some sort of interruption to the music playback itself, especially when I am using my phone, switching between apps. So in fact, it is kind of a bit annoying, but the problem will not be persist if I just let my phone, you know, screen off, not touching anything, just let the music play in the background. So no issues there. And definitely, it is a bit unstable with the current version of Hippie Music app. But to be fair, I would say that some other dongle which I have, right, would also exhibit similar kind of problem. So perhaps, you know, this is a problem unique to TB Music App because I am not getting the same sort of issue when attached to Tidal or even uh, UAPP. And in fact, I would even say that to get the best out of this PD4, it is recommended to use UAPP or even Tidal in USB exclusive mode. And the other observation which I like to share is also this. You notice here? It's kind of a bit, you know, wriggly here. After some usage, the port of this, uh, female port of this PD4, 
would appear kind of a bit loose after a while. And this is in fact a trait similarly shared with this iBaso DC04 Pro, which seems that you know there's some sort of an engineering flaw when it comes to that USB Type C female port. So this is something which I hope you know the manufacturer can pay attention to when they are designing their next dongle. As you can see on screen right now, I'll be talking about the overview and the comparison of this PD4 against the rest of the competition, focusing primarily on Cyrus Logic CS43131, especially those which are running in dual configuration with four VRMS of power. So practically, what I'm trying to say is that those dongle that you see on the list, they are pretty much identical to this PD4 internally. Okay, so let's just have a look first at PD4 scoring. Okay, in Dongle Madness, the rating itself designated from 1 until 10. I would say that, you know, PD4 scored impressively at around 83 points, precisely there, as you can see there. And in fact, the first comparison that I would like to bring up is against this Tempotech Sonata E44, one of the earliest dual 4 VRMS dongle which I am aware of. And in fact, if you look at the total score, they are pretty much identical one to one. And in fact, the individual item also pretty much similar. It's because they sound very similar, the way they are de being tuned. They are like energetic, vibrant, and in fact, very powerful. And the next comparison would be against X-Duo Link 2 Balance, which is also very popular. And I would say that between Link 2 Balance and PD4, the obvious difference would be, of course, the sound itself. The tuning for Link 2 Balance is a bit more neutral more like DC04 Pro rather than you know E44 and of course another one would be Jekyllie AP10 again you know between all these three they are pretty much identical in many ways with the way they present sound the difference being the tuning itself and of course I already mentioned about iBaso DC04 Pro now there you have it pretty much the overall view of how they perform when pitted against one another but I think one of the most important aspect also is the sound tuning itself. So for that purpose, I'm showing you this now, which is the timber signature. You see, the main differences between all the dongles which I have shown you is pretty much on how they present the sound timber itself. So PD4 definitely is something which I would consider as, like I mentioned earlier, being hi-fi sounding. So as you can see on the graph there, it is hovering more towards hi-fi sound. Where else, Link2 Balance and AP10 is pretty much somewhere in the middle. And the one that's clo sounding closer to being analog is this iBaso DC04 Pro, among all of them. Okay, let's just wrap things up for this Akliam PD4. All in all, everything considered with the price tag of just 55 US dollar, this is definitely a very, very solid dongle for the value it delivers. First, it pairs really well with highly sensitive IEM, 16 ohm, as well as the capability to drive something very demanding like this full-size magnetic planner of Fostec T40 RP MK3, and also this Sennheiser HD 650. And with that kind of price, this it is pretty much unthinkable two years ago, right, to have that kind of value. So. I would say that if you are looking for something which is affordable yet performs really really well among one of the best in the market right now, Akliam PD4 is an easy choice 